There are things more important in this world than the lives of the few, things worse than the death of the many. No matter how hard I tried to make sense of Alinea's words, I could not see how they justified letting the demoness go. To take pity on her because of her condition seemed reckless and unnecessary. So what if she was only following orders? She certainly did not seem lacking of her own will. Okay everybody, we're on to scenario 23. This is the final scenario, it's got multiple parts, but it is the final scenario. And this part is called Into the Lair. Now one thing I should say, um, that big fight at the end of the last uh, at the end of the last battle would have gone a heck of a lot better for me if I'd realised that in that last fight normal damage does work against her. And there's no hint that that will be the case. So I think that's something that really perhaps ought to be... I mean, it's not a bad mechanic, it just ought to be somehow highlighted. I mean, I don't know what they can do, really. Some sort of union tutorial, because I feel like the player is very much left to find out how the union works for themselves. It would be nice to have a little bit more of a steer on that. Okay, but uh, regardless, I mean... These dungeon crawl scenarios at the end are very much what makes this campaign so special. You know, um, all the other campaigns tend to end with a big bat where everyone, where you recruit a ton of troops and uh, you're fighting many, many enemy leaders. This one's not like that. This one, you've got these dungeon crawl scenarios at the end with a very small number of units. And, uh, and that's really the beauty of this campaign, at least when it comes to a close. That plus the, uh, the narrative, the storytelling, the characters, which on the whole are a fair bit stronger than in any of the other campaigns. Certainly when you compare it to Heir to the Throne, which is the most normal uh, campaign I mentioned last time, the campaign that everyone plays. Um, it, I mean, Heir to, the, Heir to the Throne can't hold a candle to this campaign. Uh, Invasion from the Unknown is just vastly, vastly more sophisticated on that level. Not, not to say that it's some kind of literary masterpiece or anything, but uh, just has more depth. Has characters you care about, has reveals that really get to you, that kind of thing. Um, it's not just the gameplay, it's also the narrative. Oh, that's, that's why I'm here, that's uh, what I love in computer games. Alright, let's continue. There certainly has been something amiss about Alinea. And even Malka Shah, ever since we set foot in enemy territory, walking into the Heart Fortress only appeared to make things worse. Then again, I did not exactly feel like myself either. I began to fear that the very atmosphere of this place was seeping into our heads and clouding our thoughts, and that things would spiral out of control before we could achieve our objective. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. Ooh, frost and snow. No, I didn't think the demon's homeland would be such a cold place. Achoo! Yes, there does not appear to be anything but more snow in the distance. Who knew? I assume this is but a small land in a much larger realm. Stories speak of far more varied locations, much like Erdia itself. Surely the Emperor chose this location in order to have a nigh on unlimited water supply for his ostentatious capital then. Alright, objective, find the entrance to the Lair of the Chaos Emperor. Gotta watch out, because snow terrain is not great for my elves. Then again, not many elves left. Our heroes who have to survive, the only ones who are left in the game, Gallus, Alinea, Malkeshar, can't get them dead because they've got the Union. Um, and finally, um, finally Ledinor, who's been following us around in the back. And he is an Elvish High Lord now, which is helpful. I lost, I, in each of the last three major scenarios, I have lost a level three unit, unfortunately. In scenario 21, Innuendo, um, I lost a Night Gaunt quite near the start. Um, in scenario 22A, I lost a necromancer holding the rear, and in scenario 22B, I lost uh, I lost my prowler right at the end, probably unnecessarily, but uh, 
I like when it's a big boss fight and a, and a unit dies like that, and it's only the one, I do like to try and respect it. So as it stands, we've got five recalled veterans here. We've got three undead spectres, all of whom are now absolute beasts. Um, we've got a forest spirit, who also has had a couple of after maximum level advancements. Um, very nice unit, especially for taking out Shakstal, of which there are a lot. And then over here we've got a Shied, who is absolutely essential for the healing. And incredibly, even when I've lost the campaign, it's never been... I haven't yet had a restart because I lost the Shide. So I must be doing something right. And I suspect what I'm doing right is basically never letting her fight anything at this stage of the game. Um, only going for kills that I'm absolutely 100% certain that she can get. Otherwise, using her for healing. Now look at the beautiful effect. We've got, uh, we've got a sort of weird, colourful snowfall going on in the background here. I think it's just normal snowfall, but the background has got stars in it, which is why it looks like a candy box of some sort. Okay, so this is where we are. And it looks like the path heads south, so I should probably explore down the path. And Igor is the fastest, so he's going to go first. Alright, nothing to be seen over here. The send Deathy out this way. To do some scouting on this side. So nothing much to be seen. Here's a big tree, nice for my elves. And we are now deep underground, which means that chaotic units get plus 30% and lawful units get minus 30%. So here, um, the only person who's going to struggle with that is Lethrede the Forest Spirit. Unfortunately, she's lawful, which means that she is very, very unable to deal with this situation. Bledinor and Erethan, and maybe Gallas to an extent, are going to be the units who struggle on this kind of terrain. Can put you there for now. Still, you know, I'm very cautious with you because I don't want you going out there and doing something silly. Okay, you go over there. Well, we've got nothing visible. Okay, just creepy snow so far. Creepy, creepy snow. Let's see if there are any monsters here too. Come to think of it, there is nothing but snow in sight indeed. Does anyone else find this troubling? You are right. The solitude of this place doesn't bode well. Okay, so there is going to be more. There is going to be something else to this. I mean, I presume it's not just a, a level where you wander around in the snow for a while and then find the exit. Could be. I mean, would put it past this kind of campaign design. Now, actually, what's interesting is I'm using Igor to scout, but Igor's not not the fastest here because he's not great on snow. But there's a bridge here. I spot a few foes over there. Okay, we've got a demon zephyr. Probably want to not engage with these guys. They're not the best at fighting zephyrs. And they unfortunately can't range anyone else. So if you're going to stay there, if you want to go back. Ooh, we've got some very portentous music coming in. Ugh. Slashy, you can advance. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. I want to use you for that.
Ah, oh, you like the forest, but you like it more. You're going to be able to leave boss in this forest, so you go and scout the forest. Stand on the great tree, just because it, just because of the visual of it. Very portentous indeed. Should I go over this way? See if anything over is, is there anything over here? It seems like tempting fate to go out there with one unit. Maybe a little bit of scouting wouldn't hurt though. Okay. Nothing yet. Ah, oh, there we go. And there's another Zephyr there. Alright, so you go ahead this way. And when these yellow troops come out, we can have at them. Okay, unlucky there for the demon player. I'm going to lure this Zephyr out by putting a forest spirit here. And then move the spectre over here. Meanwhile, who can deal with this guy with the least amount of collateral? Probably Galas, to be honest. He's only got 30% defense here, but can do a ton of damage with his glac glacial gladius. Gladial glacius. Alright, and he's still on full health, and so someone else can get the kill. I'm going to force feed it to Sothenia. After talking about how she never gets any kills, it's uh, just about time. And we can continue to explore with Igor. Not many enemies. Oh, we've got a, um, a pillar. Maybe it looks like two pillars on either side of this road. Okay, we've got another Zephyr, and the Zephyr is in range of Igor, if Igor goes there. Don't really want it to attack Igor, particularly. That would just be annoying. But I also don't want it to... I also don't particularly want to bait it out with a spectre. Still, it might be that that's the best choice in this instance, so... Lady, you are on duty. Speaking of wrecked. Okay, you come round here and get. Ow! Okay. Oh, we've got another Zephyr. You can attack either of them, whichever you prefer. You progress this way. Okay, looks like we're getting to some 
blockage. So there's water, there's a tunnel in here. And it keeps going. Does it go anywhere interesting? Can I path? No, I can't path there. Okay, so that is actually just blocked. It's one of those non-tunnels of which I have heard so much. Come down here, I could allow the Zephyr to fight Mal, but it doesn't seem like a particularly good use. Don't need to worry about the turn limit too much on this one. Don't need to worry about that spectre getting into a fight that it doesn't want to be in. So I just move it over here, and then we'll see what happens. Adopting the suicide on a linear approach, that's fine. We'll get into a position where she can heal the most. Alright, there we've got some enemies. We've got a Hell Guardian. Those guys are quite nasty, they do slowing damage. And Igor can see there's a demon warrior there as well. And the demon warrior is faster. And they've got that axe and chill ability. No, not Netflix and chill. Um, you come out and get her to attack you. The, death, the Hell Guardian can be next. We've got another one, a couple of Hell Guardians. Um, they won't stand up long to my spectres, I think. Well, just in case there's a, anyone lurking. All right, well, this is a very ominous looking entryway. And everyone else can keep letting or moving. Stick you up behind, put you down to the side. And the remaining spectre, Deathy, the uh, weakest with a mere 42 hit points, can also come and get ready for some action. So far this scenario is atmospheric but not super challenging. <laughs> Obviously gets more challenging when the enemies hit with all of their attacks, which is irritating. Um, who's got good resistance to cold damage? I think Galas actually has. Technically none. Alinea could do the Union. I mean, I think ultimately the Undead are the best bet. So yeah, three hits, you go for it now. Alright, well the forces of evil certainly got their uh, their mon money's worth out of that demon warrior. Uh, every single point of damage that she could have caused there before dying, she did cause. Alright, and now it's just a matter of luring out these hell guardians. And I can actually get the near one without even aggroing the far one. So that's tempting. Well, let's scout a bit more first. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Alright, there are more enemies back here. But not scary ones. No. No. 
You can move further than it looks like. You can move... Ah, I see. Because I couldn't see that path around the back. That was why I was confused. Would be nice to slow. No, neither of my slowers are in range. Galas could slow if he comes around here. And he could get slowed in return if he's unlucky. He is not unlucky. Which means that I am lucky. Such is the way of the world. Slashy, you go in. Alright, you get bonked. Just do a whale. Have a whale of a time. Nice. Okay, Deathy. You're doing grand. You're not even aggroed. Uh, and if I aggro you, I also aggro this front imp. That's fine. I mean, that this imp will be aggroed because I've got Galas there. So maybe I should, should aggro with someone else. Like, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with putting Erethan here. And then bringing Healy Lady down to do some healing. Good stuff. All right, let's see what happens now. Just such a beautiful thing to be fighting enemies who aren't infinitely respawning shuck style. <laughs> Back here we got some drones. Probably best aggro them with some spectres. Maybe my tough spectre lady. We'll see. One of them's a tad faster than the other. Well, that's okay. If you go there, then only one of them can reach you, which is which is quite nice. And unfortunately, the only disadvantage is oh no, you can you can go one step further forward. Then everyone gets everyone still gets their healing. You go behind. Never hurt to be cautious, except in terms of turn limit, and as I said, turn limit not a great concern in this instance. Ominous music continues to play, and we're almost in. Okay, no sweat. Uh, now the cold damage is rubbish against these guys, apparently. That's more like it. Let's get some arcane in there. No kill, but that's fine. A little bit of damage on Ledinor, but he gets a nice kill. And the rest of my spectres can scooch forward and get this guy. Ooh, not great. OK. 
Okay, you hop down here. We're not going to immediately open the door. As usual, I think it's wiser to wait until I've got some movement before doing that. So I'm just going to perch Igor almost next to it. Okay, got some good big heels there. Most of my spectres back up to full. Uh, only Ledinor, Mal and Elinia looking a bit weakened. And Ledinor in particular cannot breach the gate. Alright, so there's an enemy leader here. Uh, seems like the best plan is to hold at the choke point. And uh, anyone who wants to fight here can. There's a law keeper back here, so I don't want to fight next to the law keeper until I have to, because the law keeper has leadership. Interestingly, this le this law keeper is uh, is biomechanical, and is therefore immune to dra drain, poison, and plague. Frustrating traits to have. All right, let's now make an unbreakable wall of nasty dudes. Gonna knock all these gates down. Got a grunt, so we've got two grunts, they're gonna be the first people in, and on these headhunters. Also this drone. I don't know what order the players move in, we will find out. And whoever goes here in the center is gonna be in the most danger, so that seems like a job for Big G. All right, time for some camping. So brown seems to be the last, or at least, well, it's hard to, actually, I can't infer that because brown hasn't been aggroed yet. Okay, and Deathy is up to full health, as indeed will everyone else be very shortly. Apart from possibly Gallus, we'll see about Gallus. Everyone stay where you are. Nice. Okay, and that's all the damage I get to do this turn, I take it. So, let's move in. We got some nice... Bowman, who should be ranged next turn. They're playing very defensively, this green player. Smart. So I'm just going to edge everyone forward. And when I say everyone, I don't quite mean everyone. I'm going to have Galas go behind. I'm going to have Malkeshar come down here. Which will probably taunt this drone out of its little hidey hole. And I'm going to put my forest spirit here. And everyone else just close in behind. I don't know how much income this green player has. I hope it's not very much. I'm only going to aggro two bowmen and then I can press forward again. The slowest push in all of eternity. 
Okay, well the Green Planet hasn't actually recruited any new troops, which is interesting. Um, another another point of range, and the Law Keeper can range me, the Bowman can range me, the Zephyr can range me, everyone at that point, other than this drone at the back and this one Bowman. So let's keep up the very, very slow progress. Oh, maybe I don't get to call it. Welcome. Welcome all to my land, foolish creatures. It's that infuriating laugh again. Oh, I swear, the moment I get my hands on that pretentious bastard. Okay, gates to the south. Looks like where I have to go. Got some drones around. Oh, there's two leaders here. Interesting. Including some dogs. But the purple player seems to be sitting pretty. So I think the slow strategy is the right one. And Mal, you just hop forward. And Linian, you're now on full health, which means that you can go here. Galas, come up behind you. All right. Zapped. And still the brown drone, interestingly, isn't coming out. And for some reason... Ah, I see, okay. Oh, you frustrating so-and-so. Poison Helenia, why don't you? I need Helenia. Okay, well... These guys are all too slow to stop me taking out the green leader from this side. So, arguably I don't even need to. We just we'll need to watch out for these dogs. I think everyone here is, is undoggable, uh, to coin a phrase. Good. So, Thinia, do you want the kill? Good job, you are actually quite close to a level now. But it, that is going to mean that uh, Elinia, if she goes in... Hmm. I'm, I am going to go in with Malka Shah, but I'm going to go in somewhat cautiously and only kill this first dude. And then I'm going to park Elinia on here. Got a couple of drones that are gonna be up to no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. And then a few units that can come in and fight here. Even in even in lawful mode you won't get your full damage sadly here. Union, Union, tempting in this instance, given that Malkashar's already fought. Yeah, all right, bring it. <laughs> Insta KO. All right, now Alinea's going to get damaged. Bring you around here so that you block Malkashar from being attacked by the Ray Blade. And Malkashar can get attacked by other folks. 
Ah, oh, I've got Galas here. Good. Wow, okay, five misses from Gallus there, another mighty performance from our hero. Erethan can come down here. I'm not getting any gold income here once again. I mean, Igor could run all the way in here and just go at it. Might not actually be a bad idea, but I think it'd be more effective trying to take out this bowman. Two hits would do it, so yeah, why not? Alright, didn't get the kill, but um, shouldn't die. And now the purple troops are coming out. And I can defend this fort. Little drone noise there. And lots of drone noises. Now this is not a terrible position to be in, but I'm just a little worried about the dogs, basically. I'm always worried about the dogs. And you, Slashy, can come round here. Try and take out this Rayblade. Because all my three tankiest heroes are looking a bit beaten up at the moment, and they need to go and uh, get some R&R. &R. And as a result, other people... have to deal with these guys. Alright, you three form a little healing cluster back there. Galas unfortunately will be wounded for a while. Now everyone here, other than a few runner drones, oh and there is one invoker but it's not close enough to attack me next turn if I play this correctly. Everyone here is melee and these units are all pretty weak. Come on! Alright, so Ledinor's probably going to be the person the dogs go for in the first instance. We can park a spectre up here. So, Thinia, you come around here. No one can reach you. Deathly the spectre, you're a bit weaker than my other spectres, but I still think you can take on a bunch of random melee dudes if you can drain from them. And then I'll put Erethan here. And you just hop back and get some Healy Healy, healy Health. It would be it would be a bit better if Erethan wasn't Oh dear. Hmm, okay, let's see. Suicide strategy. Oh, it didn't work. Good. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's not what you want. Mmm, dog food. Dog food. Dog food. And you just entirely regain all of your health. Okay, I survived that. And now I've just got to think about how to clean it all up. Most important thing, take out this invoker here before it can damage my spectres. <laughs> Igor gets a quick kill. So Thinia could actually come around here and get this kill. I don't need her to do the healing on this side. Fantabulous. And now... You could come round here and do this. And you wouldn't take much damage. And you would be next to Sathinia. Or no, if, if you were here you'd be next to Sathinia. So oh, that's good. Took 10 damage, but that's not the worst thing in the universe. You come around here and deal a bunch of damage to this guy. Your special skills are kind of wasted in this situation. Now I want you... Uh, you can almost one-hit KO these guys. It looks like I am going to need everyone in the fight. So Mal, get into position. Ah, that's a shame you took damage. It'll take a little while to heal. Alright, I've got six units left. The enemy has four. I reckon I should be able to deal with this situation. Ideally without using Arathon at all. Mm, that's looking very unlikely now. I've got four, five units left and there are four enemies. Yeah, you just hop back down here. You won't get the full 10 health, but that was, you know, me being a bit optimistic. All right, Spectres should be able to clean up the rest. Good, one hit is all it takes. You, amazingly, Blady, are almost up to another after maximum level advance. Alright, dealt with. Okay, let's see what comes now. One invoker and a bunch of drones. But the drones are coming. Is this guy biomechanical as well? Yeah, he is. Weirdly, there's two biomechanical leaders over here. So I've just got to be cautious how I advance across the floor. Gotta not get in range, so the spectres are good for dealing with these guys. Okay, you're pretty badly damaged, so then you could get the kill potentially. And that's an advancement for her. Mm. 
So then over here, I just need to take up a defensive position. And I should be okay. Um, don't want to rush in. Everyone's too weak for that just yet. So I'm gonna... How am I gonna play this? It would be tragic if you didn't have some role in it, given just how powerful you are. Huh? Hey, what do we have here? Cockatrices! There are cockatrices roaming about this place! Huh? Bird-like creatures, which are said to have the ability to turn any living thing to stone with a single glance. They are not natural denizens of our world, being instead the product of forbidden sorcery. Yes, yes. Alright, attention everyone. Avoid direct eye contact with these pests or you will regret it. I believe I can remove the effects of their magic with a spell. However, would any victim come to harm while petrified? Okay. Elinia can revert the effects of petrification on adjacent player units at the start of each turn. Now I don't know what petrification actually does, and I can't actually see any cockatrices. Oh, there it is. It's it's advancing on me, and I need to attack it in melee. Um, good. Okay, the spectres will be uh, will be useful for that. They can't reach me yet, and there are unfortunately quite a lot of brown drones over here. Gonna wall off here with spectres. And while Keshar unfortunately can't reach a healer this turn. And maybe then. If you just pop north and a tad, you guys still can't get through. You guys still can't reach. Alinea can go on the house, and Malkeshar can get healing, Erethan can come here, and you can come there, and you can come here, and now everyone should be happy. Uh, you might not be too happy when you get a bunch of attacks in your face. Back here there's an abomination, but it's behind the gate, and it doesn't look like I can get through the gate just yet. Would like to be able to kill this guy. Not going to happen just yet. Cockatrice comes out. Okay, there's quite a lot of them. Okay, we go for the range damage on the spectre. Quite a lot of damage, but I think I can reorient to deal with this. These guys can't reach the spectres. 